Today we're going to learn how to make this trippy text animation in After Effects. How is it going guys and welcome to the Olufemi channel. We're a group of teachers that want to shore up your video production skills in as little time as possible. Yo, it's Herman here on the Olufemi channel and welcome, welcome, welcome to the final video in our text animation week. As a little reminder, I've been sharing five text animation tutorials this week that fuse design trends so that you can easily make something presentable for either a title card, logo stinger, or YouTube intro. Now we've done four tutorials so far. If you didn't know that already, where have you guys been? This is the fifth one already. Today we'll be leaning into the psychedelic 90s MTV vibe with these sharp attention grabbing colors. Now, what I love about this theme is how trippy and kind of like obnoxious it feels at first, but it never fails to make someone's head turn and just be charmed by how playful it is. As I mentioned in every tutorial this week, I'll be assuming that you know your After Effects basics, meaning you know how to keyframe things, use blending modes, and just navigate around the software. If you don't, don't worry. You can check out my After Effects basics tutorial by clicking that little pop-up over there and you can learn from scratch. You can also download the project file that I'm using to follow along. Some of the assets are going to be offline, but you can still check it out and you can just download that in the description below. Otherwise, let's hop over to After Effects. Staring at us right now is the After Effects interface. So let's go. Let's start things off by creating a new composition by hitting this button as usual. And we'll start calling this psychedelic main like that. It's an HD, 10 seconds, all sounds good. Hit okay. And then just like the previous tutorials, we got to start with some text. So we're going to use the text tool over here, click a random spot. It's called a psychedelic. This is not exactly the font we're looking for. I think something that will add variety from our animated text series is by using a font that's maybe a little bit taller. So I'm going to use a stretched font, something like Anton. It's a nice name. All the Antons out there. Shout out to you guys. But this is really spaced and it's probably because of our previous tutorial. So I'm just going to change the tracking amount to, I'm just going to input zero like that. And then we're just going to not italicize everything. We're going to make all of it caps and then we're going to change the size so it's something in your face, kind of like this. And just like what I usually do, I like to hit Control Alt Home. So I bring the anchor point to the center of the text and then Control Home and then bring it into the center like that. And before I forget, I'm just going to make things nice and tidy by putting this in the main comps folder so I know where to look for. So the first psychedelic element that we're adding to this is choosing colors that are very bold, very sharp, very contrasting. And I'm going to actually add a gradient to this text as well. So how I'm going to do that is I'm going to apply the effect called gradient ramp and we're going to bring up a plugin called effects console, which I've mentioned a few times before uh, by video copilot. So that saves me time from going to the effects and presets panel. And we're going to type in gradient ramp just like that. And we're going to go to the effects control panel and then we're we're going to also bring up some colors. Okay, this is from the previous tutorial. It's from the color.adobe.com where I can find different color palettes to use. We're gonna go for something like psychedelic. So we can look up a color palette that resembles what we're looking for. This is perfect. This is exactly what I'm looking for. Very sharp colors that are in your face. So I'm gonna go for a pink. We're gonna copy that by clicking the copy over here. Go back to After Effects and then we're gonna change the color, the start color over here that is right now black. We're gonna hit control V. So it inputs the value of that magenta E pink that we just copied over, hit okay. And then here we have this. So for the second color, the end color, we're gonna change that to something like green, nice and contrasty, just like that. And then now this is not looking super good. And the reason is because the ramp starts off a little bit too far away. So we're gonna bring that a little bit closer. So there's that start of ramp. So we can, you know, either click this and then move it manually ourselves like that. Or we can change the values with the numbers over here. So I'll do that with the end of ramp, which right now is over here. You can look at this point. If I change the value over here and move it to the left, kind of like that, starting to look psychedelic. So this is the beginning of our madness and we're going to create a border around this text. So if I toggle the transparency layer, as you can see, there's no stroke around it or anything like that. It's just the gradient. So I'm going to hit control D and then in this case, I'm going to delete this gradient ramp and then I'm going to add a stroke over it by clicking this right now. As you can see, there's no color on the stroke. There's just the white that's being filled. If I swap this like that, now there is a white border, but the value is zero right now, so we don't see it. So we're just going to move that to a couple pixels. It's only like eight, seems pretty good. And I don't really like the white. I think black might make it stand out a little bit better. So while clicking this, I'm going to set to black like that. And now I can see how thick it really is. And then this is our funky looking text and we're gonna be animating the movement. This is where we start animating the text. I want this outline of the text to follow this. And the reason that I made this separate text as a border is because if I applied the gradient ramp to this, for example, I'm just gonna quickly copy and paste this to show you what I mean. It'll just be part of the gradient ramp. So we don't want that. 
when I hit Control Z, and that is why we split it into two. Sorry, I'm just kind of going on a tangent, but we're going to parent this outline over to the main text and then we're going to highlight this main text hit p so we can animate the position and then i'm just going to go up a little bit like that i'm going to hit alt apostrophe just like this and i'm going to use that as a reference in terms of where the middle line is and i'm just moving this to a point where i want it to be a starting position right here it's not too bad i'm going to hit the stopwatch over here and then i'm going to go over to about two seconds and i'm going to change the y axis so it's kind of like over here and then we're just going to make it go kind of like back and forth but before we do that as you'll be able to tell if you watch the previous videos of the animated text series is that i like to smooth the movements out so it doesn't feel too sharp and doesn't feel like amateur unless it was meant to do that but in most cases i like things a little bit more smoothed out and i'm going to highlight the keyframes like that hit f9 so that it easy ease the keyframes i'm going to click on one of them and then go to the graph editor make sure that the speed graph editor is selected if it is not you can go to this choose graph type and options and just make sure that this edit speed graph is checked off which it is in this case so we're going to take this keyframe over here on the right and then we're just going to you know pull the handle down like that and then we'll adjust the handle like this so that it kind of like is slow and then faster and then slows down so i play it back so i'm going to exit the graph editor and i'm going to go two more seconds over so that would be the four second point as you can see over here we're going to copy this beginning keyframe because that's the up position by hitting Control c and then we're going to hit Control v so we have this keyframe over here at four seconds where it goes back up and then i'm just going to you know copy these you know what i can just copy both of these hit Control c and then just go to like six seconds like that and then we have this kind of like back and forth like that so we have the keyframes where it will go down and then back up and then back down so we've got this slow smooth movements hit control s so we don't lose all the progress that we made so far now before we continue let's take a small break to talk about this little thing that i made called enter the future it's a motion graphic asset pack that i handcrafted and includes a variety of assets you can use for your music videos commercials live streams narrative films and you name it so if you need transitions borders or custom text animations to give your video a modern edge i recommend checking it out all right back to after effects now we're going to make this look even more trippy and more psychedelic by adding an effect called the echo effect we're going to take this stroke version of it of the text and hit Control d i'm going to bring that to the bottom so it's behind the solid uh text layer for the psychedelic text and then this one will actually add the gradient ramp so we'll go back over here and if the effects control panel isn't uh, visible then just make sure you see that we're going to hit Control c so we copy this gradient ramp put it down on the bottom over here so that one also has the gradient ramp applied but it's hidden behind the text so you don't see anything yet but we will in a second. We're going to add an effect called echo, as I mentioned. I'm going to play it like this. And you don't really see too much until we change the number of echoes to something like, I don't know, 10, like that. And oof, this is looking quite trippy already. Now I'm gonna toggle the transparency grid off and you can see what it's doing. Ooh, fancy. Now, if you want the colors to stay a little more faithful to this gradient, this uh, magenta and this green, then we can change the echo operator to maximum instead. And then it's looking kind of like a solid as opposed to an echoey type of effect. What we can do is change the echo time to something like 0.1. So there's more of a delay. And then if you want it to also have this fading effect, because right now the opacity for all the layers that are echoes are the same right now. So this is when we go to decay and then we'll change the value to something like that. So it gives that blurry double vision that happens. But this is the skeleton to our psychedelic scene. But we're going to take this bottom layer, which is the echo one. We're going to hit control D and then we're just going to move that to the very bottom over here. And we're going to delete the effects over here and we're going to delete the echo effect. And then what I want to do is I'm going to make this bigger because this will be kind of like an accent text that'll be a little bit cut off and I'm just moving the position a little bit as well kind of like this and then i'm going to change the stroke width to something a little less obnoxious like three because it's just kind of like to decorate the scene i'm going to hit alt uh, apostrophe to hide these grids because it's getting a little in the way and to add that smooth psychedelic feel we're going to make it wavy by adding a warp effect so i'm going to highlight that layer i'm going to bring up the effect called warp like that and then we have something like this so all we have to do is go to the warp style which by default will be arc but we can go to the drop down menu and go to wave so we get that wavy feeling this is what it looks like right now 
and it's animating so that it is going up and down, which is not what we want in this case. We want it to be having a different movement so it feels a little more dynamic. So we're going to unparent this. So remember how this was parented over to this main uh, solid layer over here. We're going to highlight this. We're going to unparent it by clicking the drop down menu over here and clicking none. So now it's not going to follow the movement of that. It's going to have its own movement. It's going to be independent. So we're going to hit P. So we bring up the position and then we're going to hit the stopwatch and this will be the beginning position. Maybe we can start with like the P over here ish and then we'll go to the end and then we just move it all the way over here and we're just going to play it back and see how the movement is like. So this is okay. This is not too bad. I might play with the opacity so it's a little less jarring. So I hit T to bring up the opacity. I'm going to change it from 100 to something like 50%. And then this is what we have so far. Give yourself a pat on the back because you've made some psychedelic text. But we're going to add a little more to this scene and we're going to reuse some techniques that we learned before. So remember the second tutorial that we did focusing on maximalism. We're going to create some text and animate it along a shape path. So in this case, we're going to do a circle. We're going to click the text layer. Go to a random spot over here. Just make sure that you're not accidentally editing something, which in this case I did. So it's selecting this one. I think I'm going to actually lock this layer so I make sure I don't accidentally touch it. So I'm going to create a new text over here and we're going to write something like, you know, Psy Delic. You don't see anything right now because it's just a stroke. So I'm going to hit control A to make sure everything is highlighted. I'm going to bring everything down kind of like that. And then I'm also going to change it so that it's swapped so it doesn't have a border it's going to be filled and i'm going to change the color to something like i'm not sure so i'm going to go to the adobe color palette so i remember what options i have now let's go with yellow we haven't used yellow yet so we will paste the value over here click ok and we got this going on right now so i'm going to make this a lot smaller and we're going to basically draw a path for this so we're going to go to the ellipse tool right over here and then we're going to draw a circle where we want the text to follow the path of. So in this case, I kind of want it to be like on corner over here and I can always move this mask kind of like that. So it overlaps a little bit with the text, but it will be hidden underneath. And then we're going to go to the text drop down menu over here on the top, click this arrow, go to path options and then change the path over to that mask we just drew. So right now it's within the circle, but I kind of want it to be outside of the circle. So if I want to do that, all I have to click is the reverse path. Right now it's off. We go to on like this to edit the text. We're just going to you know double click it so we can highlight it and then just choose this point. And then we're just going to add more of this psychedelic text. So we're just going to highlight it, copy and paste, copy and paste, copy and paste until it goes all around the circle. So somewhere around here is not bad. We're going to go one more. And I think that this is starting to cut a little bit too close. So we'll change the font size to something like 12.6, 12.8. And then this wraps around that circle kind of like this. And if you don't remember, I want to give you a refresher on how to animate this so that it looks like it's spinning constantly. And how we do that is by keyframing the first margin. So we'll click the stopwatch. So we create this point and then go to the very end and we can just go something kind of like this. I actually want to move this text so it's underneath this one. And honestly, I think this main text over here, the one that is the parent, I'm going to hit S. I can, I think I can make this a little bigger. I think I can do something crazy like this. All right. So the animated text portion of this tutorial is basically done. Now what we're going to do is keep building the scene so it looks more presentable and actually fits the whole design of the psychedelic theme that we're going for. So we're going to start with the background. So we're going to go to the project and then you can import whatever that you like. In this case, I want to add kind of like a grungy background, which I've already imported. So this is background 41. I'm going to put that on the bottom and then we're going to rescale it. And just a reminder that when you download this project template, these files will be offline because you'll have to gather your own assets but in this case it will all stay within the project as your reference this one is pretty good background actually i think i can make it a little bit darker so i'm going to add an effect called curves go to the effects control panel and we're just going to darken it a little bit so it's not too in your face like that and then now we're going to go back over here i have this spray drip type of texture that i downloaded also and we're going to put that on top of this layer over here so scale it down kind of like that just to add some like gritty street feel to it. And we're gonna change the blending mode to something like color dodge. And that adds a little bit of an accent to it. So this is without, this is with, without, with. And then if you want it to be a little more apparent, then you can always duplicate it. 
so that there are two of these drips. And now I want to build this even more by making it a little more fun looking because I think that's what really gives that whole like 90s MTV vibe. So I have these graphics of some stickers that I got from Envato Elements and this one's like a heart. I can just place that on top like over here. Oh my gosh, it's huge. Let's hit S so we bring up the scale and scale that down so it doesn't look like it's about to attack me. And then we're going to hit R so we bring up the rotation and we're just going to rotate it a little bit and then we're just going to move that heart over to this corner over here and then, you know, just adjust the parameters so it is less in your face and doesn't look like it's going to eat my family. And then we can always play with the blending modes just like what we did with the uh, spray paint type of texture by going over here to blending modes and then maybe something like overlay. Look at that. Now it looks like it's part of that concrete texture. If you want it to be a little more apparent, you can always change it to something like soft light instead. I think I might prefer that to be honest. And you can play with the scale and adjust it to whatever you think makes the most sense for your theme. So we've got a couple more stickers over here. We've got this you know, lightning bolt one. Let's scale that down and we can change the color of this later as well. So this one will also change the blend mode to something like soft light. And then we will add this kind of bomb and then we're gonna scale that down. And I think I'm going to use the circle around the bomb over here and kind of adjust it so it looks like it's within the circle. So we can change the rotation of everything and then just have it approximately within that circle. Now, if you feel like there are certain things that are a little bit too in your face or it's feeling a bit too busy, because although it's supposed to feel quite sharp and eye-catching, uh, it can feel a little bit like too messy. So what I like to do is I'll just kind of like darken the background a little bit. So I'm going to this bottom layer, which is my background layer, going to the effects control panel. And then remember how we have a curves effect layer over there. I'm just gonna darken the scene a little bit, a little more contrast between that and the text. And then once we play this back, this is the animation that we are left with. There you guys have it. That's how you make this text animation that hits a bit of that nostalgia. Let me know in the comments what you end up using this text animation for and what you thought about this text animation week. Now, if you haven't checked out the previous four videos, make sure that you do so to expand your tool belt of After Effects knowledge. Also, make sure to subscribe to the Olufemi channel and hit the bell notification so that you don't miss the next video that comes out from the other guys here, like Nick, he's super talented, Dave, Josh, Quinn. We've got a creative gang. Now, if you want to check out what I'm personally up to, my YouTube and my Instagram handles are right there below. Otherwise, have fun creating and I'll see you guys next time.